approaching to light this afternoon, then becoming south 1-0 early Monday morning. Extended marine forecast. Issued by environment camp. Back to 16. Anyways, um, clearly we have a VHF radio mounted on the boat. And um, they're great for, uh, obviously, communication between uh, vessels and when entering a port and so on and so forth. As well as getting the uh, uh, marine radio through the Coast Guard uh, weather reports and, you know, uh, notices of aids uh, navigation or off course or whatnot. So it's beneficial for just that straight voice communication clearly and every boat should have one no matter what the size and everybody should actually have the radios on so you can hear if somebody's calling a security or if there's an oversized boat going through a narrow channel so on and so forth unfortunately that's not always the case but I digress that's not what I'm here to talk about today the other really neat feature is uh, for boats or sorry for radios that have what's called a DSC capability digital selective calling and I think it's pretty much every VHF radio built uh, since the mid late 2000s have built in DSC capabilities. Um, one can get the radio registered through the Coast Guard, either in the United States, US Coast Guard, or uh, in Canada through Industry Canada. And uh, what that allows you to do when you receive your MMSI number, you'll have uh, provide some information about. Uh, the name of the boat, uh, the length of the boat, the gross tonnage, and potentially how many persons can be on board the boat. So in an emergency situation, uh, all these radios have a little panic distress button on them, as you see there. And I'm not going to push it, but it's, it's, it's clearly protected because you don't want to push it unless there's an emergency. This one just flips open. You hit that button. And the neat feature there is that the radio will continue to transmit your MMSI number and um, a signal of a distress. It won't give the nature of the distress, for example, if the boat's sinking or on fire or somebody's having a heart attack or whatever. But it will notify the Coast Guard where you're traveling, as well as other boats that have DSC capabilities in the radio um, you'll hear that there's a distress and it'll give the MMSI number and it'll give uh, if the boat or sorry if the radio is hooked up to a GPS it'll also transmit uh, the coordinates as well as the time when the distress was sent. Now this radio on the boat is we have the standard horizon fixed mount radio and I have it wired into our uh, small chart plotter and the other thing is so like I say if you have that hooked up to your chart plotter it's going to transmit the coordinates of the radio, or at least the, the uh, GPS. And uh, that'll do that automatically. So if there's, again, if it's an emergency situation, most people will probably be in a panic and they don't want to be on the radio and they're trying to remember where they are and what the name of the boat is and everything else. We've heard it before. Uh, so the radio will do that automatically for you. So if you, even if you, if you have to abandon ship, you hit that button and you know you dive in the water so you don't have to worry about trying to get your coordinates out and the name of your vessel and the size and so on and so forth so that'll transmit that automatically but the other neat thing is like I say if you're hooked up to uh, if, if both radios for example the boat that's sending it and a potential boat in the area like us it will show up on the chart plotter and it'll show I mean the way Standard Horizon presents it I don't know about other GPS's but the way Standard Horizon does it is it just shows up with a little box and then the actual MMSI number of the person that sent it. And if you just put your cursor over it, it'll show the date, the MMSI number, the date, time when it was transmitted, as well as the coordinates. And it'll give you a, uh, you know, from our current position, this one uh, was 32.49 miles at, you know, at, the, at, a, at a bearing. So obviously, if we were 32.49 miles away, we probably wouldn't receive it just simply because uh, the radio doesn't have that transmission capability. But if it was more local, it would show up. Now, one can use that in an emergency situation, and obviously there's clear benefits of that. Uh, the other neat thing is uh, 
to communicate between friends, you don't even have to pick up the microphone anymore. If you have your friend's MMSI number uh, registered into your radio, at least saved, like I have a directory with a number of MMSI numbers as well as the name of the vessel that it's associated with or so assigned to, so I can scroll through there and just do an automatic position send or even a position request to our friends. And that's what this one is showing up here. Now this one was done a few years ago. It's just one of the ones I haven't deleted. And that's why it's showing 32 miles from our current position. Uh, this was on a long weekend in uh, 2009 actually. It was a position request. Actually I think I sent this from my handheld. And I'm going to get to that in a second too. So you can, um, like I have my radio set to automatically reply if there's a position request. Meaning, let's say we're crossing the lake and we're hoping to meet up with our friends uh, on the other side. And they're already there and they want to know roughly where we are. They can send a position request to my radio. And obviously as long as the radio is on and the GPS is on and they're all happily working with each other. Uh, my radio will just automatically reply back to the radio that's asking for the request and my position would show up on their GPS or on the radio because a lot of newer radios have bigger screens and the GPS is built right into them. Um, the other thing is the handheld. We have a, uh, a funky Standard Horizon handheld radio that we got a few years ago. Now this handheld radio has a built-in GPS on it as well and um, like I said I think that's where uh, we were just screwing around here I was out in the dinghy and just trying to see how well that this would transmit and send and receive the uh, the position so this radio has its own MMSI number exclusive of that one and this one was the first one registered with its own uh, MMSI number in Canada uh, a few years ago when we got it. Now that took a bit of doing because I had to explain the situation to Industry Canada where I registered it through was that the primary radio on the boat already had its own assigned MMSI number. Of course they had a record of that but this one was going to be used primarily and is and has been on our dinghy and the whole idea of having its own MMSI number would be have its own service identity you know showing it's a small dinghy with probably only ever two people on board and that if we got into trouble especially up in Georgian Bay um, I would want to be able to boom again this one has its own distress button as well center position and hopefully uh, help would uh, be able to uh, to arrive and so it was a little bit of confusion discussion but anyway see they allowed its own separate uh, service identity MMSI number for it now, I was just reading online um, through the U.S. Coast Guard site. Remember, we're in Canada, so this is registered through Industry Canada. And all the MMSI numbers are issued for free. There's no charge, and you don't have to renew them. It's, it's a lifetime thing. Um, but on the U.S. Coast Guard site, uh, they, they are not allowing handhelds to have their own MMSI number. So their workaround is put the same MMSI number into this radio, as you have on your ship station. And I don't know if it's a little bit confusing. It says they've applied or they're in discussion with the FCC in the States to try and work that out. But to me, it just it really doesn't make any sense. Like I say, if we're out in the dinghy or in the tender and we're miles from where the boat is and we send a distress, uh, you know, I don't want them looking for a 40 foot sedan bridge when it's just my wife and I in a, a nine foot dinghy. So that's why we did this, and I hope that the uh, Coast Guard and FCC can come to terms with that in the States. Now, in the United States, see, I might note to this, that's why I was looking it up, you can register yours through uh, Boat US, CETO, and the US Power Squadron. Um, again, it's free and it's easy to do. Uh, do it online right through Boat US, which again is an arm of uh, West Marine, and, and, and I would imagine it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, Last note on this, last couple of notes, is that, remember, uh, some people get confused. They think that it, it's the GPS that is sending and receiving the information. It's not. You, you have to bear in mind, it's your VHF radio. The VHF radio is getting the position information 
from the GPS, but of course it's the radio that's transmitting and receiving the information. So you have to keep in mind that as with all radios, it's line of sight communication. So for example, we are in our marina, which is half a mile a mile inland from the big lake, and it's next to impossible for us to communicate from here through the trees and the buildings and everything out to the lake. So if there was a distress a mile offshore, we probably wouldn't hear it. Not directly, the Coast Guard would rebroadcast it as a mayday, um, but we wouldn't handle it, be able to hear it directly. So again, if it's just a simple position request or position send and we're trying to communicate between buddies, uh, more than likely it isn't going to happen. If we're in the middle of the lake and we're trying to communicate across the lake, probably, because we've got a nice radio and a nice nice antenna and really, really good reception. But uh, on a handheld, not so much. So you got to keep that in mind. It's the radio that is getting uh, and transmitting the information. The GPS is only telling the radio where, where you are in the world. In the world. Um, yeah, final thing was the MMS sign number. Now, most radios allow you to only... Uh, punch in your MMSI number that you want to one, maybe two times. After that, the radio's got to go back to the manufacturer and they have to reset it and then they'll send it back to you because that is done uh, obviously for some sort of security reasons, but there's no way to reset it. So if you try to punch in your nine digit code into your radio and you make a boo-boo or you buy a used radio or you want to sell your radio to somebody else and get rid of your MMSI number off of it, Chances are it's going to have to go back to uh, back to the manufacturer, and they'll they'll clear that out of the memory, and uh, send it back to you, and then you can put the new one in. So bear that in mind. You only have one or two chances. Read it. Read the uh, instruction manual in your radio to see what what uh, is said about that. But uh, if you ever want to sell a boat and the radio is going with it, or you're just selling the radio because you're upgrading, it happened to me. We when we got that radio a few years ago. Um, uh, the radio that I was replacing, I had the MMSI number into it, sold it to uh, another boater, and again, to try and get my number out and his number in, just wouldn't happen. So I had to go back to Standard Horizon, which is, we're in Ontario, Canada, and I had to go down to uh, California, so you can imagine there was um, a couple of weeks lag time in there. I mean, they do it for free, but just it's a little bit of uh, a hassle, shall we say. So keep that in mind. I think that's all I have to say about MMS sign numbers right now. I hope uh, you were able to learn something and get some insights. And uh, yeah, so check your radio. If it's got DSE, absolutely get an MMS sign number, even if, if you don't have a GPS. If you have a separate GPS, look at your owner's manuals and see how to wire them together. It's pretty straightforward, <laughs> unless you're dealing with standard Horizon, because the purple wire out of the GPS goes into like the brown wire on the radio, which is little bit of a confusion on the in and out. I think it's only three wires. But anyways, uh, it's it's a neat feature and um, doesn't cost any extra money. So and it could help save your life or save the life of somebody else in the future. So there you go. That's all you need to know about MMSI. I hope. Cheers.